first we're going to come over here and talk to the Voyager. This little guy is pretty much your stapled useless NPC for this place. He sells you two things. First, this right here. This is used for basically sending you, the player, and anyone in your party who is currently in your party standing in front of that thing over there called the flight control panel, which is right here, flight control panel. The green tanks are used to allow you guys to go to a mission right here. If you're wondering what this place is, it is basically a giant gathering killing zone. Currently, currently, it's patch 3.3, this place is mostly just for gatherers. You're not going to see a lot of battle classes in here, but, but, there's more. According to Square Enix, in patch 3.4, they are going to be doing a massive overhaul of this system. So crafters, gatherers, and battle classes will no longer have to queue up with each other. So when you walk in with eight other people, totally random strangers, you won't have to be like, who's all here actually killing and who's all here actually farming? You will queue in specifically for what you're looking for, battle or farming. Now, obviously, the battle part's farming, too, but are you farming for battle spoils, or are you farming for farming spoils? And what I mean by farming is, fairly strictly simple, your crafting jobs. Botany, Fisher, Miner, okay? All which are used in there as well for their own thing. Alright, next we're going to move on to the next item on his list. The tanks, which have a red base. They are gray with a red base. These tanks are used to send your ship out on what, I guess you could call it a retainer type system. The same thing as your retainer, how you send them out on little missions to farm stuff for you. So what I mean by that is your tokens. That you go over here and you send them out to do stuff like this. Basically, it's the same concept, but you have to have the tanks instead of these lovely little tokens right here. These are used for your retainers, while the gray and red tanks, these ones, are used for your airship. Okay? And how you go about using them is, click on the airship you want to send out, go to the second choice, Exploratory Voyage, click on the voyage, and they'll bring up a list like this. Now obviously, we just recently moved, so we're currently working on re-leveling and farming at the same time with it. So it's an on and off thing. Every day or so or every two days or so we decide to not send the airship out and we use it for the FC to actually go get stuff. Alright, so basically from here you can send it out on a voyage, a mission of your choosing and all you have to do is just click on the one you want. Now obviously it's not going to let me click on anything because I don't have any tanks on me but that's how you do it and you can choose based off of your ship's overall flight distance and all the other little shit in between. It's really not that hard to do. So just for an example, I'm going to go grab some tanks real quick. I'm not going to send it out, but I will show you what I mean. So we're just going to grab five tanks. Because the amount of tanks used is also determined the distance it travels. Alright, so now they're actually lit up. So let's say, let's go here. That is 32 out of 80, and it uses two out of five tanks. 52 out of 80, 2 out of 5 tanks, or 3 out of 5 tanks. And that one is 74 out of 80, 4 out of 5 tanks, and that is the maximum I could go. Now this would mean that if I send this airship out, it will not be back for, if you look at the bottom, below XP and return time, just to the side of it, it will earn a little over 130,000 experience, and it will be back in 30 plus hours. You cannot, in any way, reduce that time once it's already sent out. However, let's say that you want to go to these same three wards. Well, let's see what happens when I remove these. Now let's go with this one, this one, and this one. Now you saw the time dropped from 30 hours and 15 minutes to 29 hours and 39 minutes because the path it's taking has now changed. So it reduces the time. And it dropped from 74 to 71 flight distance. So let's remove these again. 
So let's start from, hmm, let's go 10, 1, 7. Now it dropped from 29 hours to 28 hours and 14 minutes, and the flight distance dropped to 65 out of 80, which we, means we almost have enough, almost, almost have enough to pick a fourth slot. So basically, you have to think about it as you're traveling in a straight line. Do you pass up the place you're going to and then backtrack to that place and then circle back past the place you went to the first time to go to the place on the other side of it? No, you go in order. So you want to try to make sure that wherever you're starting, and if you look at the map where it says where you see the little circles and the numbers that are numbered right now on the right hand side, the bottom, there's a blue circle right at the middle, the bottom of that page. That is currently where you are. Your ship goes from there out. So let's say I want to go over here to section three, okay? Let's do section one, then section three. And basically you would go from the blue dot to section one, and then you would go straight to section three. Or you could do it this way. You could do section 10, section one, section three okay because you always want to make sure that you're going in an order don't deviate don't do something funky like this where you go oh i want to go here then i want to go here then i want to go here because then you just increase the amount of time it takes because it has to go to one then it has to go to two and then it has to fly back towards one pass up one and go to three so that's basically you have to think of it common sense like that that's always how this place works so keep that in mind when you're sending an airship out all right so I'm not gonna send it out of course I just wanted to give you guys an idea now obviously this goes way way higher yeah, there's actually 30 different areas that you can send it to so this current airship can only go to these ones because like I said we just got our house recently because um, we moved from our old FC house to a new one because the FC was growing and we needed more space and we wanted more stuff and little, you know, crap like that. So with a more detailed screen, I could give you more information. But that is the gist of how you would use the airship in your free company workshop. Okay. Now, he has absolutely nothing else for us. Now let's talk about the schematic boards. Now that I've talked about the Voyager and what his stuff is used for, schematic boards is stuff your airship brings back for you okay you send your airship out and, and every now and then they bring back pretty much every single time you send them out they bring back items that you can only get through airship gathering exclusive to just airship gathering so you have airship projects housing project ethereal wheel projects the airship projects are pretty straightforward they allow you to build different sections of airships as it levels up there are more I've already gotten three, two, and one already, so all that's left is four, five, six, and seven. And each one of these materials that it asks you to get all come from gathering with an airship. And there is a guide out there that will probably, actually there is a guide out there, which I will list that guide below in the description when the video is done, on what each section brings back, okay? When like, let's say you're specifically looking for the ethereal ether blah fiber crap this shit <laughs> let's say you're specifically looking for this but you don't know which area you have to send the airship to well there are actually two or three different areas you can send it to to bring it back and that guide somebody has already written out a whole detailed guide and it's actually very well done on what each area has and what it brings back now obviously square enix will update those things as time goes on so it is up to the, per the people and the the ones who make these guides to update their information. Now, if they don't, I apologize. I will try to remove the guide as soon as I find it is more of a hindrance than anything else. <laughs> but I will remove that link at some point in time when it seems invalid in some way. So from here, basically, you just take any material you get back from there. So I don't have enough material yet because I haven't discovered an area where I can find the actual lumber. I'm still getting scraps. But once I get enough lumber, which I need six more lumber, I can get the grade four airship prototype to build the next stage. I think it's like level 20 airships. Okay, housing projects. Housing projects pretty straightforward. Let's say you specifically want to design your house. Like I, if you've seen them, 
people who have big houses, small houses, or medium houses that look like Moogles. They got Moogles everywhere. This is how they got it. Okay? Again, exclusive to just airship gathering. The material you can only get through there. Or if somebody else has it in game, you can buy it off of them. So if you're desperate, you can always put up a party finder, hey, looking for this mat, this mat, and this mat, reasonable price, PM your offers, and maybe a bigger guild that's had their airships for a long time have stockpiles of this and they're willing to sell you their mats because these are tradable. They're just not sellable via the auction house. So you do have to get this stuff through other players or your own FC airship. But this is how you get the different house designs. The restaurant, the armory, the weapons, and the Moogle. And I will show you that there's another one, but we'll get to that in a minute. Next, you have your ethereal wheel. <sighs> this is the one that most annoys me the most because a lot of people find it useless. And it's really not useless. You'd be surprised. If you have a max level wheel, they just came out with a new one, which is a grade 7 wheel which allows you to have a lot of buffs being created at once, um, including three-star buffs. Uh, three-star buffs can only be made via the ethereal wheel in your FC house, okay? You first create the buff. You create basically the husk of the buff itself through the fabrication station. Then you take that after it's been made via by yourself or other players, you take that buff off there, the husk, and then you take it into your work, sh your house someplace, wherever your FC has their ether wheel, place it on the ether wheel, and it takes anywhere between three to six days to craft itself. And then once it's done, um, once it's done, sorry, I got distracted there for a second. It will automatically, when you take it out and you activate it, it automatically puts the buff into your FC active buff logs so you can turn it on at any time there are level three buffs which can only be obtained through this feature or via the auction house again and these are how you get the different levels of buffs so these are the actual wheels themselves so these are the ones that like if you want to be able to craft more and more and more and more buffs this is how you would do it and these are the different levels of buffs that you can make and that's the I say fabrication station, which is over there, because I almost said that, but this is a schematic board and that's how you create all the different things for the workshop. Now to the heart of the entire system. Now this is where I get the most complaints from people, that they don't understand how the fabrication station works. Okay? We currently already have a buff up and running, or not a buff up and running, a craft up and running. I'm just going to click on that just to show you. We are making the Empress Type 4 castle, which is actually going to be the next piece we're going to equip as soon as we're able to. <clears throat> what it basically does is it gives you material that you have to basically donate. You add it to it. So I would click on it. So let's say I don't have the material on me. I have none of this. Okay. <clears throat> Cobalt rivets. Revits, I get yelled at for saying this incorrectly all the time. Revits, 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 who cares? Okay? It says you need 30 of these in order to complete this specific one. Now, this can be done by anybody. You have to be the level, quote, you have to be the level of the item it is required. So you must be level 43 blacksmith to turn cobalt revits in. And you have to turn in 30 of them. Now, it doesn't have to be one person turning in 30 of them. But, again, you have to be level 43. Now, there is a minimum amount you're allowed to turn in at a time. And a maximum amount. You have to turn in 10 out of 30 every time you turn some in. As you can see, there's a quota mark. 10, 10, 10, 3. So, which means when you're turning something in to increase the progression... You have to turn in 10 of these in order for it to jump 10 out of 30. And then it tells you how many you have in your inventory of normal quality and high quality, and how much experience you will be rewarded for turning in those 10. Also, as you look up on the top, it says construction quality, 30 out of 100. Okay? Now, if you look here, that's 30 out of 30. So that 30, that Steel Indigots gave it that 30 out of 100. Well, okay, well... If you look at that and you think about it, hmm, 
that would be 90, what? 30, 60, 90, 99. That would be 99 out of 100 with all of these. That's not true. There is a chance that it could even be less. In order to make that construction quality 100 out of 100 or as close to 100 as possible, you turn in high quality crafted items. So if basically what happens is, is if we were to complete this craft after turning these in, we would come in here after phase one is complete. I would come over here. I would stand here, wait for a bunch of people to show up. You have to have a minimum of four people. They'd all join the party. They'd stand in the room. I'd walk up to this board and there would be progress item because phase one would be done and it would allow me to jump to phase two. And basically what phase two is, is right here. And you can actually look up the phases. So like if you want to know if, if you can craft something for a later phase, you go to the item that's being crafted. Okay, we're crafting the Emperor Type 4 castle. You'll click on the four castle. All right, we're currently on phase one of three phases. The next phase, phase two, requires 30 steel rivets. Well, you're a low level crafter. You can probably do 30 steel rivets, so you go do 30 steel rivets. And you can't turn them in yet because we're not on phase two yet. And then you go to phase three and you go, oh, nope, can't do any of these. Then you're done. You can just drop off whatever you want into the FC bank and then somebody else will take them and add them to the thing later on and get it out of the way. But once you progress it to the next phase, it will require you to do the next phase. Once you finish to the last phase, the item is actually completed. So as you can see, it does take quite a little bit of work for even one person to do, but it's not that bad. It's tolerable. Um, but again, like I was stating, what happens basically when you use high quality material there is a chance that the next phase will require less material it will already be pre-done so let's say it does activate and you jump over to phase two and steel rivets you only need to turn in 20 out of 30 because 10 are already done and steel joint plates 20 out of 30 because 10 are already done that's basically what happens when a high quality progression is activated it completes some of the steps for the next phase. And then they those do not carry over. So you have to go in again, like let's say you wanna make this phase get a high quality progression so you can knock off some of the materials on this. You have to make sure that the quality construction of phase two is closest to 100 as possible in order to make this one have a chance to have some of these crafts already pre-done or half done. And that's basically how it is. It's very simple, but you can only progress phases with four people in your party in the workshop at that given time. This is a group project. Cannot do this solo. Okay. All right, so this is how you make the different parts to the airships. These are the ether wheels and all the different buffs. As you can see, we only have grade two buffs because we just got the house. We haven't had a chance to get all of our stuff. Most of these are all basically one phases except for the higher ones and here is the one house that is currently not something that you have to purchase it's already here and then you go in and build it so let's say you want to build a large merchant wall which this this one actually looks really cool i used to have this in one of my old houses as you can see phase one requires a lot of material 160 of every single one of these Elm lumbers, nails, cut stones, bricks, mud stones, logs. You're building a house for God's sakes. <laughs> they make it as realistic as possible, but as annoying as they can make it too. Phase two, 160 of all of those. Phase three, 160 of all these, except for the Von Ash, which only requires 75. Only 75. But that's basically how that one works. But that's a mansion. So let's go to a cottage. Um, as you can see, it's 30 for all these, 30 for all these except for the last one, which is 45, 30 for all these except for Vonish, which is 18. So a small one is easy to make. And if I pull back, I'm going to go up here real quick. <clears throat> oh. You can actually see what it looks like a little bit. Here, let me look, make that small. See? You can get an idea of what it looks like. And that's a medium. And that's a large. And all of the outdoor decorations are preset. Once you put this in place, you cannot change it anymore.
And if you're one of those people that want to demolish the project and start something new, that's how you demolish it. But I wouldn't do that unless, well, you have permission. <laughs> you might piss somebody off. Alright, so over here there are a few other things I want to go over. Um, the view logs pretty much allows you to view the last airship voyage that your ship went on and what you got. So here we got a rating of C. We got a little over 125,000 experience, and this is all the material it came back with. Pretty much all standard easy stuff to get, as well as materia, which this material is useless. Melded into your gear for spirit bonding. All right, change airship components. If you want to change the airship, you want to look at uh, the different levels and the different um, performances uh, also, in the guide that I will be linking below, it is a written guide. It actually goes over what each one of those performances do. You can look at how much experience you need to level up, what level you currently are, as well as what pieces are currently equipped and their uh, durability, or do they need to be repaired and whatnot like that. To repair an airship, you just click on Repair Airship. And then you just click on the piece you want to repair. If I had materia in, if I had the repair material in my inventory, it would open it up and repair that piece. You can paint your airship. So if you want to paint it a specific color, like, I don't know, I want to paint this, I could paint it red. And then it shows what it looks like when it's painted red. Or I want to paint it yellow. You can paint the bottom yellow. So if you want to, you know, paint your airship a different color, you can paint it a different color. And we can go over here. You can do the same thing with the pillars. And if I wanted to paint the front of the airship blue, we can paint the front of the airship blue. Or if I wanted to paint it pink, we could paint it pink. So as you can see, you can paint your airship any color you want. Which is, a, I wouldn't say it's a new feature, but it's hasn't been out as long as this system has been out. And then right here, you can change the name of the airship or destroy it, which most likely, if you are part of a FC that has control over their stuff, you most likely won't have these options up. But that's where you change an airship's name and you destroy an airship if you want to build a new one. Nope, destroying an airship also destroys its level and everything that it can do up to that point. So don't do it unless you are planning on using it anymore. All right, so putting that aside, that's pretty much everything in the workshop. So let's go to the etheric wheel real quick. And I'm going to show you exactly how this works. Now, we only have the low level one because, like I said, we have to save up to get the big one. <laughs> but in the FC workshop, where you would go to the fabrication station, you would click on um, ethereal, the ethereal wheel buffs, you would make those buffs there. You would take that buff off that fabrication station once it was complete, and you'd bring it to this thing right here, which is the ethereal wheel, or the ether wheel, whatever you want to call it. Place, remove, or convert. So you would place the buff, you would look in your inventory, which I don't have any, and you grade one and grade two. So we can place one grade one and one grade two buff on this stand. And you would click on that spot, and it would place that buff there, and it would take a couple of days for it, usually three to four days, usually. And then the buff will finish, and then you would have that grade one buff or that grade two buff put into your FC um, tab once you take it out. So basically, you would go here, you would remove the wheel, click on it, it'd go into your inventory, then you click back on it again, and you go to convert wheel. You go to your inventory where the wheel went, you click on it wherever it is, and it would turn it into a buff that goes right here. Obviously below. Now it doesn't go in these spots, it goes in the spot below where I currently have no buffs at the moment. <laughs> and that's where it would go. So you can create your own buffs as well. Um, they came out with a 15% um, a XP buff, which can only be created through the FC workshop. You can also go to the, the auction house and buy one too, because it is sellable. Which they do sell kind of pretty heavily. But that is how you use the workshop. Alright, I think that's everything for that. I think I covered all of the key points. 
Let's just go back in one more time just to make sure we covered everything. <clears throat> All right, so we covered how to use the flight control. Missions are for your personal use as a player. Voyages are for like retainer veteran stuff. Okay, repairing and changing ship components. The Voyager is where you spend company credits to buy blue and green tanks. Greens are for personal use, reds are for airship. Schematic board is where you purchase all your buffs from the materials you get from your airship or you purchase from other guilds with, that are willing to sell to you. And the fabrication station is where all your buffs are crafted, as well as components for building new airship parts. And housings, if you decide you want to build a house, glamour, a new wheel, or buffs. And I think we covered it all. Yep. Alright guys, well that's it for this guide. Um, I'm going to post this and get it set up and rendered and add all the descriptions and links and everything down below. If you guys liked it and really want to see more guides of this kind or have any questions that I didn't answer the first time around as well as if the information was useful, don't forget to hit uh, like, favorite, subscribe to all the other fun shit because you know that's how we all show our love for each other as well as uh, leave your comments down below letting me know um, how you guys feel about it if there's any other questions you have asked which I just got done saying other than that take it easy guys